Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for Leather Element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's look at three common accidents or mistakes in leather craft, but also let's see how we can get around these, how we can correct these. But the first, I almost feel like this is an initiation into leather craft because you're not a true leather crafter until you've messed up a leather stamp. Now, this is just my opinion, but I think it's accurate. Letter stamps have destroyed more projects than anything else in our shop. In fact, on the tool, we've actually got a designator there that's gonna tell us if our letter is right side up or not. Well, am I gonna pay attention to that? Evidently, I'm not. Well, in our defense, we've got a lot going on here. So say we've got this beautiful biker wallet cut out. We've dropped in a very clean border stamp or corner stamp or done some gorgeous tooling. The last thing for me always, and I don't know why, that's my letter stamps. I'm gonna drop those in last, and there we are. We've got an upside down letter. This project is stopped in its tracks. Well, actually, maybe not. Let's start here. How about we create a patch. We drop that in. There we go. We use the same color stitch as our borderline out here. That's actually going to look good. I almost like this better than the original project. Okay, let's take that up a step. Say we extend these lines down, make more of a diamond shape, or extend the patch, drop in some cool stamp designs, or maybe how about a scalloped edge around this? Drop in a cedar on each of the scallops. Again, Take that ball and run with it. So many ways we can go with this, but right there, we've cured a devastating mistake and we're actually gonna get a better project out of it. Here's one more example, because this can work everywhere. Now, we don't all have the Weaver foil stamp. I love that machine, but it is so easy to get a letter backwards. On this, how about we do this? Let's get this, let's do a small patch and drop that in just with a couple of rivets. You know what, again, I actually like that better. Looks like the project was designed that way. So not only can we cure some of these mistakes, we can actually create a better design technique or project. One of the first things I learned in Leathercraft, length is always our friend. Very rarely, with few exceptions, do I wanna cut, say, a double shoulder or a side across the middle because we lose our length and belts. These are such a common project for us. Or strapping, a common part of our projects. Well, let's say we've done that, or even worse and more common, we've got a belt blank, but we've cut it too short. Well, there's actually a creative way to fix this. So let's start right here. Now we've got a good video on measuring a belt blank, so I'm not gonna go into great details there, but the outcome is this. I'm a 35 inch waist, so I need a 44 and a half inch belt blank. So let's start here. All I can come up with is 40 inches. Well, if we only need to add a little distance, we can always make an additional billet and just rivet that on. That's gonna give us about another inch, maybe inch and a half. On this end, we can always add billets. So right here, say let's do a round and punch, add rivets or conchos, and drop that right on. If we don't wanna sew, we can always go with an English point, drop in our rivet holes, and rivet that right down. So all told though, if I put a billet on both ends of that belt, that actually looks good. And we see a lot of production belts done this way simply because we need less strap. Okay, on this end, say we need a little bit more length. Well, we could always just create the entire billet and rivet or concho that on or even sew it. Now, that's not necessarily my favorite way to go. And I would, if we're going this route, maybe clip my corners or do a round and punch just so it moves through the belt loops easier. Okay, here's one problem though, right here. Say we're using the same, the same leather. Well, that's three ply of eight to nine. Well, it's gonna feel like it's a quality belt, absolutely, but it's a little bit too thick. Okay, let's open a creative door. What other leathers do we have in our shop that might be a little bit lighter weight? Well, right here, I've got some six to seven ounce holster leather. How about that? Actually, that looks pretty good. I'd love to see a black billet on both ends of that belt. Or how about our reptile? We make a billet out of that. Wouldn't that look good to be on both ends of this belt? Now, it's a little bit thin, so we're gonna need to line that with something. But let's think about that. Say we line this with a little heavier leather, we're gonna have to sew it. So we've got a lined, sewn billet on both ends of our belt strap. How cool is that? And one more, I, there's so many options here. 
Say we need a 65 inch belt and the only thing we can come up with is about 40 inches in length. How about we just come up on one end with a small billet there and we rivet that on both sides. Let's make it look like it was designed that way. Maybe we drop in some letter stamps, a name, maybe some spots or some stamping. With a single shoulder, we could actually create a belt about 15 feet long and we could do it with style. I love to hand sew. I love the look of the stitch line. I feel like I have excellent control. Best part, we don't need a machine. We can do this on our kitchen table and it looks just like a machine. But there's all kinds of little irritating mistakes we can make here that are all easily solved simply by backing up. You'll see what I'm talking about. So one of my favorites, and I am notorious for this, not equalizing out my thread. So what happens? I have half the thread I need and twice the thread I need. I'm not going to make it all the way around. Here's a fan favorite. We just miscalculate the length of thread that we need. We've got to go to this corner and we have that much thread left. Very irritating, but it happens. It happens. Now one more. Oh, and I love this. We get a small knot in our thread. We don't notice it. So as we're tugging on it, that knot gets tighter and tighter. We'll never get it out. So let's do this. Let's just back up. Easy way to do this. If our needles are still on our thread, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to pull it backwards. Okay, let's go through that hole. There we go. All I'm doing here is simply unsewing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsew back far enough to where I have enough room to tie a knot. And we're going to get to that in just a second. There is one other way we can do this. If this isn't glued, we can always take, this is our smallest awl. It's one of my favorite awls. But right here, notice I can separate the leather. There's my two threads. I can use my awl on the inside because if we're trying to pick out our thread with our awl, we're going to trash our top grain. But that's an easy way to do it. Best part about that is now my thread's already on the inside, so I'm ready to tie a knot. But let's do this. Here's what I'm talking about. So right here, let's go through one ply. Let's say we backed up far enough to where we've got room enough for our needle and a knot. So right here, I'm going to come through one ply, and I'm going to come through one ply. Okay, our thread's on the inside. Now let's tie a good square knot here. Good. We've sunk that knot down in there. Let's pull that up and let's just clip that right there. Good. Now those two little tails, we can press those down in there. Okay. Now we're going to hammer down our stitch line when we're done. We'll never know where that knot is. So now let's start anew. We've backed up. We've cured the problem. Let's start with a new piece of thread and I'm going to go through exactly that hole. Now we're going to have to work our way around that knot, but we can do it. So let's pull that through. Let's drop in four or five stitches. Let's just see if we can tell where that knot is. And there we go. Now, notice what's funny. I wasn't paying attention right there. Again, I've got more thread here than I do here. Simply not paying attention. But if we notice, no knot, and particularly when we hammer that stitch line down. Here's one more place this is going to help. Say we pop a stitch. Well, that's obviously not our work doing that, but again, the point is, let's take both sides. Let's back up far enough to where we can tie a knot. Then we come in with a new piece of thread, come across, tie our knot, and we are done, and it's going to look great. Now, one more point, because sometimes we can't get inside of our project. Say we're doing a belt. So with that, we've got a great video, a Shop Tricks video on how to tie a square knot within a hole. Super easy to do, but if we simply back up, we can cure all kinds of issues when we're hand sewing. Mistakes happen. It's part of it. Some we can fix, some we can't. But the bigger point to this video, before we toss that project, and I've had a few end up in the round file, but before we go there, let's see if we can get a little bit creative. Maybe there's a good way to fix it, or even better, enhance that project. So I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.